<laughs> good morning, good afternoon, good evening, family. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Hold on a minute. To the mental house with me, your host, Khadija. Um, all right, let's get right into this this morning. Thank you all for being out there. I appreciate you. You already know. I want to just get into this because uh, y'all already know um, I'm a, I try to be an equal opportunity, um, objective person. So uh, this conversation, uh, I'll be it short, is just for the people uh, who are really shocked um, by people who have responses and of uh, something other than a peaceful protest. I just do not understand um, the psychology in that other than you trying to snow me. And when I say that, that means you're trying to just tell, tell you're trying to piss on me and tell me that it's rainy. Okay? Um, The first thing I want you to think about is this. These children out here that are doing stuff to you that are so egregious to what it seems like to be protesting over 400 years of spiritual unrest in a group of people. For those of y'all who esoterically cannot um, understand that, although that there is people taking the opportunity to take advantage of this coming. All that comes to play, it's got to be yin and yang. I mean, that's what pushes everything. So that we, we establish that, right? So I want you to think about this. Nothing can stay the same after the coronavirus, right? Nothing. It's just all bad. It's just craziness. Okay. Do we go back to America that Donald Trump claims to make great again? Or do we take a deep breath and finally get a chance to exhale? Because there got to be some changes made. We cannot go on the way it's going. And for those of y'all who talk about the peaceful protest, I want you to remember that when Jesus, you Christians, oh, my beloved Christians, Jesus, we talk about Jesus, oh, Jesus, oh, Jesus coming back. All of y'all who talk about this damn peaceful protest. Brother TD, I heard you. Uh-uh. When Jesus lost his temper again, he didn't go and say, I, I hate all you, or I'm just so uncomfortable with all of you taking this house of the Lord and turning it into a denagogue, a synagogue, of, and a den of thieves. Oh, I'm protesting about this. That's not what he did. He came with the fire. And he tore up the temple, right? That was his anger. And he said, hey, that's enough of this. And he showed you his anger, which is a natural response, okay? It's a natural response. So now y'all can't, con see, you, the thing about it is it's a difference, y'all, when people, when you know the truth and when somebody's trying to brainwash you, okay? I'm not with the brainwash. Do you think all the times that people who have been warning us all the time, the, the, the watch people at the tower who said, this country will be destroyed from within unless we address the original sin. Are y'all crazy? This country will be destroyed from within unless you're willing to deal with it. And so far, Y'all still going to use those Gestapo tactics. I still see people getting killed by the police. Oh, yeah, it's going to continue. And so is the movement of I ain't taking no shit no more. 
And the fear, the, the, the no fear you looking at in the eyes of our babies. Let me tell you something. You remember in the, I, I, I keep, I'm always using these analogies. The children of Joshua. Look at them. Some of us don't even know our damn kids. They so damn direct. They come out the womb. Uh, bright, intelligent, and looking at you like, what's up? Because I'm already on a higher level. What time is it? They come with their eyes open, looking at you crazy. Y'all ain't y'all. Y'all say y'all can understand stuff. Chris, Christians, can you understand really the signs of the time? Do you really understand that these babies that we bring in forth, these grandbabies and great grandbabies that we see and then we looking at them, y'all, we can make the assessment that it's something different about them. It's something different. And in my opinion, when you go back to scripture, you think about the children of Joshua. Whoa. Y'all remember Joshua in the Ten Commandments? Y'all remember? He was, he was a rebel. He was the one that said, hey, this shit got to stop. This got to change right now. I'm sick of this. And um, Dathan took his girl. Joshua was uh, John Derrick, by the way, Bo Derrick's husband, I think. Yeah, her husband. But that's in real life. <laughs> Back to the movie. Joshua represented a certain type of spirit. I hear some people say even the spirit of David. I think I heard somebody say it. I think it goes back even stronger. I think the children of Joshua. And David and Goliath, yeah, same energy. Same energy. You know, so you put that together. You, you, you put that with the cries of our ancestors. Hold up in them slave ships. Not knowing where they going. The energy of being raped and abused and all that stuff. You put all that energy and you unleash it. And you keep going year after year after year after year of trying to push stuff down on people and making them kind of eat that stuff. and regret. It's got to manifest itself at some point. And I'm going to tell you something. When white people, because we need allies. When you see them and they see this. They know it's bigger. And they also know that we are the mother and father of all civilization. And the energy that we put out, they have to respect it. They understand their privilege. They understand it. They understand their privilege. And because of the human family, it's that energy that's going to move this stuff forward. Because all that other stuff that happened before, Y'all can't just send all these narcissistic, projective type of messages that are really crazy and expect people to adhere to it. You couldn't keep doing that. I mean, you, 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 you got kids, you got black kids and white kids growing up together, sleeping together. And it wasn't like it was in slavery when after a few years you can tell your kid to stop playing with them because your kid want to play basketball. And he wants to play, and you and you got means, and now you want to send him to a basketball camp that's ran by LeBron James or or, or one of these black men. Or, you 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 know you know what you're doing. See, and because we all over the place, you can't get rid of us. You can't get away with us like that. So it makes me do think about what the big uh the big news Zabrisky said. It used to be easier to control a million people than to kill them. But today it's easier to kill them than to control them. Because we know now. And the consciousness of the people have been elevated more and more and more and more. And unless you willing to give up your privilege and allow some equal sharing of the wealth of a country that we built. See, you stole it from the Native American. You stole it. You took his stuff. And then you brought me over here. I had, our ancestors had no choice. Yes, by some dirty dealings from some wicked people in Africa. At the end of the day, you know what the heart and soul of America is. Black culture is American culture. We're all twain. We nursed you from our breasts, even though you enslaved us and beat us. And so you don't think all that energy has some way of... We already mixed up. And it's that energy 
that's going to say was going to move some of that negativity out the way, in my opinion, and begin a new America. I might not even see it. Just like Dr. King said, I might not get there with you, but it will be a new America. It will be. Because the coronavirus is going to knock a lot of these old white men and a lot of these old dangerous behaviors and attitudes and karma that they want to inject on the world and keep some of us disastrously suppressed, oppressed, while they continue to eat off of us and go to Africa and indulge and steal all the wealth. Let me tell you something. Where we're from is the richest country, the richest continent. And we know it. So everything that comes out of that continent is rich, even they, whether they know it and conscious of it or not. You're going to unleash something that you don't want to unleash either in this country and abroad because everybody's waking up and unless you're willing to do right by us and take the example take the example <coughs> excuse me y'all of trying to do something different Take the, take the example of that. Learn from it. Otherwise, like all the great nations, we're going to get destroyed. And I love America. My ancestors built this country. And so did yours. And so did yours. So, we had a crossroads here, y'all. And we better figure it out. Martial law, how are they going to quell this? I want to see some black leadership step forward. People that we considered leadership for years and years and years with that original plan, whoever the spokespersons are for, whoever, I think that when we look at leadership, the plan for the black man, the plan for America, because we've always had roadmaps. And unless white people are willing to take our leaders serious and look at some of the blueprints and the roadmaps that we have for ourselves, not what you think we need, what we know we need to separate from you, to have a land base of our own, to do our own agriculture, to do the things that we need to make ourselves a more sufficient nation, because you don't really want us anymore. You don't want us. You don't have any need for us no more. But we have to figure out a way to love ourselves and figure out a way to live with you um, and enjoy you, but at the same time, get the respect and have police our own, deal with our own the way we deal with our own and not have the remnants of the slave master over us anymore. That's the only way I think this is going to work. So, with that being said, y'all can hear the garbage being out there and my dog's about to lose their minds. So, I'll see you in the next video, okay? If you like what you hear, please like, subscribe, share.